Hey, this is Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com. And today we have a great question that came in from Allison in the SmartSuite community. And she asks something, and Allison, I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but she asks, do we have the ability to have blocked tasks which become unblocked based on a dependency? We run a market research company and we have actions that are only available to work on after we have received information from the client. Now, this is something that I expect will come out as part of the new release, which includes Gantt and more project management functionality that John referenced on a recent webinar. But as we're waiting for those features to come out, I'm putting together a slightly hacky way of how we can accomplish this within the solution. The first thing that we'll do is we'll take a look at our setup here inside of SmartSuite. And I've got a tasks app. And inside of here, I've got my basic status field. And I'm going to add a couple other fields to help us accomplish this. So I'm looking at my tasks. I have three tasks in this project. And we want to say that we're trying to get this client information by way of this onboarding form. And that we can't really do our initial consultation and the scoping document without the information that we need from that onboarding form. So we're going to say that this is blocked. Now, my default instinct would be to say, let's go ahead and create a couple statuses in here where we can say there's a blocker and it's blocked. But I'll show you why that doesn't fully work in a second, which is why we're creating a couple of additional fields to help us out. One field that we need to create, I called blocked by. You can call it what you want. You might call it dependencies or something like that. If we go to modified field settings, this is really a link to the tasks. So we're on a task and we're linking it to itself to tasks again. And in this case, we don't want to allow linking to multiple records. I know that theoretically tasks could have multiple blockers, but that's going to make it a little bit too complex for this current setup, which is another feature improvement I hope that we'll see here. So go ahead and create that link to the tasks itself. Let's go ahead and add the data that we need into this field. We're saying that these latter two tasks are blocked by the first one. Let's go ahead and pull that in. We'll say it's blocked by onboarding form. This one is also blocked by the onboarding form. And here's the situation is that I'm not a huge fan of how this works to have a linked relationship from a record to itself. We would expect that this would be essentially a many to one relationship that we wouldn't see the corresponding other linked records this way because we don't want it to work in this two-way street. We don't want to say that this onboarding form is blocked by these two because it's not necessarily true. So I've done this before. I asked for a feature request inside of Canny, and you guys were super helpful. We had 41 people who upvoted this feature request. I'm going to do the same thing here today, which is to ask you to upvote this feature as well. I created this one, this request called Better Support for End-to-One Relationships or Linked Records Between an App and Itself, which is really just what we were talking about. We don't want to actually see the data go both ways when it's related to itself. And there's lots of other use cases for this. If you're doing an account hierarchy, you have parent accounts and children accounts. Maybe you're doing a contact management structure. Who's the boss of who? Anytime that you have a scenario like this, you want to be able to support those relationships between records and tying it to its own record type. So I'll drop a link to this in the video description below if you want to go ahead and upvote that, because I think that'll help out in a lot of different situations. But that being said, because of this, we also want to identify, okay, well, which one is actually the blocker itself? Because it's unclear from this relationship which one is blocking versus being blocked. And that's okay because we're going to use this second field to help us out as well. So we've got our blocked by, which indicates the record that it's blocked by. And then we're going to call this one out as being the blocker. Now, this is up to you exactly which field that you want to use. But what I did is I chose a yes, no field. And I'll show you why in a moment when we get into our automation. I rendered this as a flag here and color coded it red. So it'd be really nice and visual. And I'm saying that this onboarding form is the blocker for those other two tasks. So we're only going to call out the actual blocker itself and not the tasks that are being blocked by it. And we can keep a status for all of them as blocked if that's helpful from a visual standpoint, because really we're waiting on all three of those tasks. Now we want to talk about the situation where eventually this task is going to be unblocked. And we want to know that we can start working on these tasks. I think that's really at the heart of the question that Allison asked in that comment. 
let's go ahead to our automation. And I've set one up already, an automation for unblocking our tasks. So we want to run this on when a record is updated. That's going to be our trigger. And we're using the tasks app here. And we're saying, where is blocker? And this is why I chose this field type as opposed to a status field. Because let me just, if I had chosen our status, notice how it's only showing us what the current updated value is. So if we said it went from being blocked to no longer blocked, there's no way to do state change. So John or other product folks at SmartSuite, if you're watching this, I'd also love the ability to have the status field be able to track the pre-state and the post-state as well. I think there's a lot of applications in terms of business process when we're wondering what we're moving to before and afterwards. But never mind that, we've got to work around here with that field that we created, which is why we created this yes-no field. And we'll just search for that, our block is blocker field. And we're going to say if it changes from being equal to yes, so it was a blocker in the past, and it is no longer a blocker at this point. And then from here, we're going to have our actual actions. The first one is going to be to find the records that this corresponds to. So we triggered from our parent record, which was the blocker, and now we need to find those children records, which are the ones that are actually blocked. And in this case, we're going to go to tasks again, and we can just call this find records, that's fine. But the condition is going to be if that blocked by field, now remember that this is our linked record here, and if it contains the title. And if you remember from our other videos, this gives us the ability to look up that triggering record from the, the title itself. That's what we put in instead of a record ID here. So we've got the fields from the trigger. You'll notice that up at the top. And that's where we would plug in title to be able to find the related records to the one that was blocking it. And from here, now that we found those records, we're going to go ahead and update those children records that we just found. So if you come to tasks, the one thing to note here is that you'll see a toggle here and just make sure that this is on the find record tasks, not when the record is updated. You don't wanna go based on the trigger. We want to actually do this to the children. So make sure that you've got the right one selected here. And then all we need to do is say, let's update that status to whatever you want. You might say it goes in the backlog because it's just available, or you might say in my case that now it's in process and ready to go. We could do other things too. Maybe you want to fire off an email notification. So we could set up other automations about that to say, hey, you had a task that was blocked. Now you're unblocked. You're good to go. Go ahead and save that automation. And we should be all set here. Let's give it a try. In this case, we are going to have this blocked task go to anything, but it really doesn't matter. This isn't what's running that automation, if you remember. So we could say, oh, good. We're all good to go. I marked this complete. And now the important part to trigger this is I need to unblock that. And I'll tab off here. And remember that automation can take just a little bit to trigger as it's especially doing that find action in the background to find the records. But now it's looking for the related records that are blocked, that are the children of this. And we've got one. And we've got the other. So that updates the status. Of course, you could update other fields if you want, if that would be helpful, but that's the gist of it. So Allison, I hope this was helpful for you and for the folks out there. Let us know if you have any more project management questions, because this is something we spend a lot of time in, especially with our clients. If you have any questions about your own smart suite implementation, feel free to reach out to us at our website, automationhelpers.com for a free 30-minute consultation.